let's go over nested resources. So yesterday, you did a project that went over all of the RESTful routes for a single resource. Assuming we have a resource called event, these are all of the RESTful routes. So this works great for a root level resource. A lot of times you're gonna have a resource that only matters with another resource. For example, comments. When you have comments, you want to know what the comment is actually commenting on. So that's where nested resources come into play. With nested resources, we don't only have this, but we also have nested resources for comments. These are the nested resources. Comments only exist for a single event. Notice how we can't have two IDs. That wouldn't make any sense. So over here, instead, we say event ID. So now this URL, get URL, we are saying for this event, show all of the comments. So if we visit that URL, we will see all the comments for this specific event, an event with this ID. If we post to this, then we are creating a comment that is specific to this event. If we put with the ID of the comment, then we're updating that comment. And if we delete that comment, then it gets deleted. So the reason this is called nested resources is because it's nested within the events resource. If you wanted to, you could have the same thing for some other kind of resource like videos, for example. If you did this, if you had videos and events, you would need polymorphic associations, but we're not gonna worry about that today. So if I wanted these routes and I am in Ruby, how do I get these routes? Let's work on these first. What's a great easy way to do this? Resources. This will generate all of these routes. It's shorthand for get events, pointing to index, same thing for show, and a bunch of other ones. This is why people like Rails. Rails has the idea of convention over configuration, which means even though you don't explicitly configure it to point to your events controller, Rails by convention assumes that you're going to use an events controller because of the resource name events. That's harder to memorize because there are conventions you have to memorize, but once you memorize them, it makes things a lot quicker. Because when you see this, you can just immediately know, oh, okay, there's an events controller. I have a bunch of events routes pointing to that controller, and so on. So if I did not want, for example, if I didn't want people to be able to delete events, how could I prevent that using this shortcut? Yeah, there's two ways. I can do only and specify all the ones I want index, create, new, etc. Or I can just say, don't do delete. That's a lot easier than having to write them all out and then omitting delete. All right, very cool things, keep them in mind. Now here, we have nested resources. We want to do resources comments, but that's not gonna quite work, is it? What is this gonna generate? Yeah, it's gonna generate all of these except for comments instead. Well, we don't want that. We want it to be within the context of an event. So fortunately, Rails makes this very easy. And all we have to do is put it inside a do block. And then this will generate all of these and a little more. New and probably some other ones I'm missing. Edit. Cool. Assuming we are on a video page, or sorry, not a video page, events page, events 55. If we want to create a comment for that event, what's the URL to do that? Events slash 55 slash comments. And what are we doing on that URL? Post. This is the HTTP request we need to make to create a comment on this specific event. So once we create a bunch of comments, how do we look, view all those comments? Yeah, to the same URL. And instead of creating, we're viewing comments, all comments for the event with ID 55. And lastly, if we have a comment with ID, say 12, how do we delete that comment? Delete. Well, how do we know that this is part of this event? 
there's a bit of a problem with doing fully nested resources. If you have a common ID, you don't necessarily know its parent's ID, or in this case, the event's ID. So if you just want to update that comment, or if you just want to delete that comment, it's really annoying to have to go in to try to figure out where the event ID is. So people have come up with a better way for put and delete, or for updating and destroying. They say, well, if you have this common ID, then we don't really care about the nested part. So at that point, you can just do comments slash ID, and then you can delete it or update it. So if we want to accomplish this, what do we need to do here to achieve that? Accept. That's a good start. What are we excluding? Update and destroy. So that removes these two from there. That's great. So, so how do we achieve these last two? Yep. And that's it. So as you can see, this resources helper really makes it easy to control your routes. With accept and only, you can specify exactly how you want to construct your application's API. Why would you want the edit? Ah, so that's our next point. So some of these routes might not be necessary. The reason being that usually you only want to see comments when you're on the parents page. Or in this case, you only want to see comments when you're on the events page. So some of these we don't really care about. For example, show. We will just show all the comments on the events show page. So we can get rid of this. And how are we going to remove that? Show. Same thing for new. If we want to create a new comment, we don't want to make the user go to an entirely new page. We can just have a comment form on the event show page, on this page up here. So we can get rid of that too. And lastly, we don't need an edit page. If our application is good enough, we can have a bit of JavaScript to have an edit button so that people can edit the comment on the event show page once again. Yep, it looks like we only want post in here in the case of comments. These comments are so coupled with their parent, we can do most things on the parent's show page. Create, thank you. So yeah, that's it for nested resources. Any questions?